What's up y'all, it's Shuffle, and in today's video we're going to talk about the best trinkets for each hero. And I do have some criteria for what trinkets I pick, so I'll talk about that in a second. Before I even talk about the criteria though, I'm going to talk about the description box below, which you should open and check out, which has links to the playlist that the videos are in. It also has the social media stuff like Discord, Twitch, Patreon, and Twitter. All those have some very cool things going on, with the exception of Twitter, which is just me talking about my cats most days. The criteria for what trinkets I selected is as follows. I wanted to pick one class trinket for each character, and I wanted to pick one neutral trinket. So one trinket that isn't a class restricted trinket that you can use on several different people if you really wanted to. You don't have to necessarily use these two trinkets together. They are nice when you do put them together, and I'm going to show a lot of things that are higher in power level. I'm trying not to show as many things that have like end game stats and whatever because that gives the wrong impression to new players like well I don't have focus rings so what do I do but the goal of showing the higher level trinkets is that it's something to work towards so if you see something like focus ring that has 10 accuracy and I think 8 crit or whatever it is you go okay crit and accuracy are good so how can I get crit and accuracy in different ways usually you just want accuracy that's like the most important offensive stat in the game. Speed is a close second, if not first. It's really hard to say which is better, but I usually think accuracy is better, but that's besides the point. So I just want you to see the things I'm about to talk about in terms of trinkets and go, okay, how can I adapt what I'm seeing here to what I'm doing? The other benefit too of showing off the very rare trinkets, which are the orange ones like Blasphemous File, which we will talk about, go figure, spoilers, is even though it's a very rare trinket and it's a high power level, Orange trinkets you can get from any boss at any time. You just have to have the boss up and it has to roll into the loot pool. And then sometimes you get lucky and get it in different ways. But when people say like, oh, you know, you're showing focus ring, I can't get focus ring. It's like, you can get focus ring from Apprentice Necromancer. You know, you can just wait and be patient about it. So it's not like these things are out of reach. The hardest trinkets to find are actually the blue ones, surprisingly. Just because the tier that they start showing up in, in terms of missions, is a bit stronger and usually it's either a long mission or you don't start seeing until veteran and there are a lot of blue trinkets out there so the pool is pretty bloated so i actually think rare trinkets are the most rare go figure all right enough stalling for content here so abomination is first the first trinket for abomination that i think is the best that he can get is broken key this is a dlc trinket from color of madness and there are a few reasons broken key is just absolutely gross there is the fact that Abomination, like any other character, does want a bit of accuracy, just a pinch, you know, like 10 accuracy is good enough. Go figure Broken Key has, I believe, 15. So that's a very nice number to have. That's more than pretty much any other accuracy trinket that I can think of off the top of my head. But the other benefit of Broken Key is the massive stun chance on it, which means Manacles gets into the realm of being able to double stun some low stun resist enemies or reliably stun pretty much everyone else and manacles can hit rank 3, so it makes it a very good stun just in that regard, and its base stun chance is actually kind of low. Neutral trinkets were a bit tough to decide for Abomination because you can either lean into his transform mode or his human mode, but I really think his human mode is just that much better and almost not worth pressing transform unless you really need the sudden burst of damage. So for a neutral trinket, I'm going to pick Stun Amulet, the reason being that boosting the stun chance of manacles is just great in general, and then the minus dodge doesn't really hurt Abomination too much because he has a self-heal, even though it's not as good as Solemnity for HP. It's still a self-heal that he can use and spam reliably. And then you get bonus stun resist on top of it, and a lot of frontline enemies can usually stun your frontline enemies. So being able to resist those stuns with Abomination so he can like Manacles the next turn, or Beast Pile or whatever, or Transform and Slam, or Absolution if you're trying to stall, all those things are circumvented and made better by having stun resist, so that makes Stun Amulet a pretty good choice, in my opinion. For Anna Quarian, I think her best class trinket is Master's Essence. I don't even think it's close. Although, Fleet Florin is really good. That's a blue trinket that you can find. Master's Essence comes from Crimson Quartz, and that is a trinket that just gives her everything. It gives her bonus healing, which caps out her healing at 5 HP at rank uh, 5, which is good. That's good enough to you know do stuff, get you off Death's Door, get you out of range of those 4-point Bleeds and Blights. Fantastic stuff there. Gives you debuff chance for Flash Powder and Blight chance for your Blight. So really nice stuff. All in one trinket, no downside, just absolutely gorgeous. This is something you definitely want if you like to play Antiquarian. If you find it, definitely don't be upset that you found it. The neutral trinket that I have for Antiquarian is Feather Crystal. 
So Feather Crystal is a very good trinket overall. It's really good on characters that have dodge as their basic defense. So Antiquarian has guard, but also dodge. Those are her two defenses. And then she gets speed on top of it. And having speed is nice on a character like Antiquarian because she needs to set up. She can set up herself by putting down either the dodge vapors or protect me on someone. Or she can go first and put down flash powder on a threat or get someone out of stealth for your damage dealers to catch them. So there are a lot of benefits to giving Antiquarian speed. So I think that if you're going to be using Antiquarian consistently and you want her to do stuff on your team, you should be looking for speed and then debuff chance and then boosted healing if you do need some kind of supplemental healing on your squad. Arbalest is next and the class trinket for Arbalest, I'm going to suggest Medic Screeves. Arbalest has some really interesting class trinkets. Like, if you want to go damage their Keening Bolts, or you can use the Wrathful Bandana if you don't want to heal with her. And she's just got interesting stuff all around. The Childhood Treasure, the Stuff Bunny, if you're not running Musketeer, then that'd be, what, the second place cup? The bonus healing on that is just strictly better, honestly, but I think Medic Screeves are just much easier to obtain. They are a green trinket that is a lot of boosted healing, and it is not uncommon to run Medic Screeves just for the entire game if you're going to be running Arbalest, because the bonus healing is good enough. And you can get that heal up to like 6 or 7 points baseline before anything else is being applied, and that's good. Like, that is good enough to do main healer status for Arbalest. The neutral trinket for Arbalest actually came in very late in the writing process of this video, and that is going to be Dismiss Head. So for the first few iterations, I was looking at different damage dealing things, or just giving her some extra crit and accuracy or something like that. But I remember Thick was trying to have me use Dismiss Head on Musketeer, and I completely forgot that this trinket even existed for as good as it is. And the reason it's so good on Arbalest specifically is because a lot of units don't reach into rank 4, and if they do, it's like something mild, or it's like damage over time, or it might be a bit of stress or something like that. And the usage of Dismiss Head gives Arbalest a lot of extra damage, which is fantastic, so she can go just hyper carry status. But also, with the negative stats, Arbalest can handle those negative stats very well. She has so much HP baseline that getting an HP cut doesn't really affect her that much. And then like I was saying before, she doesn't usually get targeted there in the back, so you just give her pretty much bonus damage and a bit of bonus stress for, I don't know, like I said, bonus damage. So it's a good trade-off. She's probably one of the best users of Dismas Head in the entire game, and that's saying something. No surprise for Bounty Hunter, his class trinket of choice is Hunter's Talon. This is just better focus ring, and I've seen people talk about how the 50% food consumed is a downside. It isn't really a huge deal for this one specific reason. And that is the fact that whenever a hunger check comes up, either in the hallway or in camping, you can just take Hunter's Talent off. You can take it off and put it in your inventory, and that will immediately lower the food consumption. And then you can just put it back on right afterwards. So it actually isn't that big of a deal. And eating extra food, even if you do have to do that, it's better than losing dodge on someone that is likely to be getting hit in battle. Because minus 8 dodge from Focus Ring is pretty heavy and the other thing too is the food consumed for hunter's talon doesn't actually apply to hallways i forgot about that as i was saying just a second ago it only applies to camping the neutral trinket for bounty hunter i'm going very low level here and i'm going to pick dazzling charm stun amulet's just generally better for a lot of reasons in terms of the fact that there are a lot of enemies that have stuns but you also lose dodge on top of it which kind of sucks otherwise dazzling charm it is very routine for at least my experience running Bounty Hunter, like I will run Hunter's Talent and Dazzling Charm at Champion. Like I have no issue running that pair together because it gives Bounty Hunter his ability to do damage, gives him a little bit of accuracy so he can flashbang backliners, and then it gives him very consistent stuns because you have a nice little boost of 10% on top of it. So Dazzling Charm is an incredible stun trinket. There is a reason this thing has been nerfed in the past. It used to be, I believe, 20% bonus stun, which is which is frankly absurd, but it is still a good trinket. For Crusader's class trinket, we're going to pick Paralyzer Crest. I like this a lot if you're running Frontline Crusader because it is a lot of bonus stun chance early for a green trinket, and minus two dodge really just doesn't matter. Like, minus dodge matters after about five. Minus two kind of sucks, but not really that impactful in the grand scheme of things. And then 20% stun is fantastic. We were just saying a second ago that 10% stun on Bounty Hunter is amazing, so obviously 20% more is good in just every way, shape, and form. 
For a neutral trinket for Crusader, I love the Ancestor Scroll on this character. It's very close to what he has in Signed Conscription, which is a Crimson Court trinket that he has. But the benefit of Ancestor Scroll is that you can pass it around to other people. And also, Crusader is... He might be the only class that can double dip into it without, like, a camp skill. Other characters either heal HP or stress, like, the majority of the time. I guess Houndmaster can do both, but he only can self-heal and then Leopard. And I guess, um, Flagellant too, but... Besides those more fringe and tougher to use cases, Crusader can use the scroll for Inspiring Cry and get bonus healing on both the HP aspect and the stress part of it. That is really nice, and then like I said, you get to pass it around after. So, Crusader with his really good stress heals in both battle and camp, and his ability to play off healer or even main healer at champion means that Ancestor Scroll is just that much better. Flagellant is up next, and for the class trinket, I'm going low level again. I'm picking Heartburst Hood. Flagellant has some very interesting class trinkets, but honestly, a lot of them don't quite do enough. So, after those considerations are accounted for, I'm down to Heartburst Hood. I like Heartburst Hood a lot, because for speed when you're low HP, that is enough to really get stuff done. You can almost always go first at that point, because Flagellant is just a fast character in general. So he can go first, he can hit Redeem to save someone else, he can hit Reclaim to save someone else, he can hit Exang to save himself, he can hit Endure if he needs to, and he can just do a lot of things with this one little burst of speed. For the neutral trinket for Flagellant, it came down to two things. It was almost going to be Flesh Heart, and the reason I was going to pick the Flesh's Heart is because it makes him immune to Reclaim's Bleed, and it gives him bonus HP to play around with. And I like those things a lot, because with Flesh Heart, you can make Flagellant into the main healer of your party with, like, no issue at all. You can just spam Reclaim all day. That's very nice to do. But then I came back to Martyr Seal. And the reason I came back to that trinket specifically is because you get the bonus HP on top of it, like the Flesh's Heart, so you still get to play around with his HP total and make some plays that way because there are some calculations you can do when you're taking damage to, you know, make sure you're under 40% and all that, which is nice. At the same time, though, it doesn't make you immune to your own bleed, so you can make plays with that if you do want to reclaim. You can bleed yourself down into low HP. And then finally, you get the nice, juicy stats at Death Store. So the reason I like Martyr Seal over Eternity's Caller is because the stat distribution for Eternity Caller is just all over the place. Like, you get some of it when you're at Death Store, you get some of it when you're afflicted, and it's just not as cohesive. For Martyr Seal, you get the 15% HP the entire time, and then you get every single bonus on the trinket that is not the HP at Death Store. I cannot tell you the amount of times that Flagellant for me has just eaten some big crit once he's at about, you know, 40% or 45% or whatever, and just hit Death Store immediately, and I felt pretty safe because I had the Martyr Seal on, but then also the following turn, Flagellant just like sang crits them like right back for huge damage. So that's why I like Martyr Seal a lot. I think one of his best trinkets just in general is Martyr Seal, but the close, I guess, second that's not Flesh's Heart would have been the Bleed Amulet. But now I'm starting to get into Ramble territory, but those are just the two really good trinkets for this character. Grave Robber. This was actually kind of a tough choice here. So it was between Sharp and Letter Opener and Raider's Talisman, and I actually went with Raider's Talisman. Sharp and Letter Opener is incredible. It benefits Lunge a lot. It benefits Pick to the Face and makes it a decent move. It's okay as it is, but it actually makes it pretty viable once you have the Letter Opener, and it's just all upsides. But at the end of the day... Having Raider's Talisman does a few things that's really nice. It gives you damage that isn't just melee damage, which is what the letter opener gives you. It gives you speed, which even though Grave Robber is the fastest character in the game, it is nice to have a bit of extra speed on top just to make it more consistent. And then you get the Trap Disarm and the Scouting. The Trap Disarm is just very safe, even though she has very high Trap Disarm. I think she has the highest in the game. It just means that if you're like a level lower than what you're supposed to be for the dungeon, so if you're level 5 in a level 6 dungeon, it caps you, which is nice to do. And then you get the scouting chance on top of it, and there's no point in the game outside of a couple of like scripted missions or farmstead where you don't want scouting. Scouting is just good. It leads to more money, it leads to safer expeditions, and it prevents surprises. There's just no downside to having scouting. It's incredibly powerful, 15% bonus scouting, you give her the two speed and then the extra crit 
that applies to her range attacks as well, and then lunge critting is is definitely a happy chemical in the brain type of moment. And finally, there's the minus HP on top of it on a character that has decent dodge who can go into stealth. So the minus HP isn't that big of a deal, which means that Raider Salesman just covers pretty much everything this character is about in one singular trinket. For neutral trinkets with Grave Robber, it came down to a few choices. There were things like Sun Ring or Surgical Gloves, which I have trouble saying sometimes, but there you go. And those were considerations, but honestly the thing I'm ending up with on this list is Dismas Head. And that is because Dismas Head gives you a lot of bonus damage for a character that can keep herself very safe. If you have a decent team comp with some frontline stuns, then every time she lunges forward she's not going to get you know beat to death by the frontline enemies. So the HP drop doesn't really matter. And then she can stealth if she gets into trouble and that keeps her safe from everything besides like huge cleaves. So you get a lot of extra damage out of Dismas Head on top of some downsides that are very easy to manage. Outside of Dismas Head though, I would still suggest some kind of accuracy. So again, Surgical Gloves or Sun Ring and stuff like that. Those will still do you very well and you should not ignore them. Next up is Hellion. So Hellion just really wants some accuracy and there are a couple reasons for this. Like she doesn't need too much accuracy for the front line, but if you want to run that Iron Swan and If It Bleeds stuff against ranks 4 and 3 respectively, you do need some extra accuracy to hit those backliners because they are pretty evasive. So because of that, I'm going to suggest Heaven's Hairpin. This thing is just very solid. It's 10 accuracy minus stress. Those are both nice things to have. Like, I don't understand why they're together to the effect that they are because it's high torch and that's very easy to manage. Everyone's usually playing at that unless they're doing some kind of challenge run. So you have that going on. And then you have Surgical Gloves on top of that. So that's my second trinket here. That gives you more accuracy, more crit, and Hellion is someone that really, really enjoys crit as a stat. She has some really good base damage, and she has some pretty high crit rates, and then she can boost it even higher with Sharpened Spear. I know that I'm not talking too much about Hellion overall, but really she's just a character that you give her 10 or 20 accuracy and some crit, if you can find both of those stats, she's going to dumpster most content by herself, as long as there are other people that can give her the occasional heal or the stun to keep her a bit safe. Next up is one of our protagonists, so we have Dismas, aka Highwayman. For the class trinket, there's probably no surprise that I'm picking the Shameful Locket. This is much like Bounty Hunter's Hunter's Talon, which is just better focus ring. Shameful Locket is better focus ring, and it's not even close, it's just very good. And also with Highwayman, you don't want him to be getting hit when he's reposting if you're going to go a repost build. So you don't want the minus dodge from Focus Ring. You get 10 accuracy, you get 5 crit, and then you get bonus stress, which he's one of the best at managing stress because he's usually killing the enemies outright or getting big crits, which means he's lowering his own stress over time. The other reason you do want some accuracy too is because you want Pistol Shot to hit those rank 4s. You also want Repost and I believe it's 85 base accuracy on the counterattack to be as high as possible. With this in mind as well, that means that our second trinket for Highwayman is going to be the Ancestor's Signet Ring. The Signet Ring is a completely nutty trinket and I'm surprised it took me this long to get to it. But you get 10 accuracy on top of... 10 prot which is really good at keeping you alive and doing damage the reason we want the prot more than like we were saying before with focus ring is that protection gives you some kind of extra defensive measure against getting hit while reposting so we want to keep our defenses as high as possible when we're counterattacking while also giving ourselves the most accuracy that we can so for highwayman you're always looking for accuracy wherever you can find it because his accuracies are kind of mediocre outside of open vein and point blank you can always use tracking, but that's really slow if you're not fighting a boss. So once you have the accuracy locked up, then you're just looking for some kind of defensive measure, or more damage or crit if you can find it safely. For Houndmaster, the class trinket that I'm going to pick for him is going to be Evidence of Corruption. There's a lot of utility in this trinket. You get Scouting Chance, and then you get Minus Surprise Chance. Both of those things are just very good in general. Scouting is nuts. You get a ton of it. You get like Ancestor Map level <laughs> scouting for one trinket which is incredible and then you get the minus surprise chance just in case you don't scout anything. 
For Houndmaster's Neutral Trinket, I'm going to pick the Ancestor's Pistol. The reason I'm picking this is because you get 3 bonus speed, which is just always good to have, but you also get 15 accuracy on top of it for range moves, and Houndmaster does struggle a bit with accuracy. His accuracies are kind of bad at 105, and he only has one melee attack, and that is Blackjack, so I think that having one trinket that gives you a ton of range accuracy is warranted. Jester coming up next here, so we're gonna give Jester the crit dice for his class trinket. It was hard to pick the critical dice over Dirge of the Devoured because that thing is absolutely nutty in its own right. And there are probably people sitting here trying to figure out why I didn't pick the Bright Tambourine. And the reason I don't like the Bright Tambourine is because in most cases it's just plus two stress healing. And then you get the 25% stress resist on top, which is nice to have. But it's also on a character that has a lot of stress mitigation, either through dodging stuff or healing his own stress in battle. So Bright Tamarine doesn't really get much done for Jester. But I do like having the critical dice because if you want to go some kind of damage spec, either Dirk Stab or Bleeds, then you have bonus crit to make it really strong. And then if you want to use Finale, the best thing about Finale is when you can get it to crit. So giving it 7% bonus crit is incredibly helpful. That makes it very close to being a true nuclear weapon that you would probably want Finale to be, and that's nice. For Jester's class trinket, it almost could have been Ancestor's Code or Camouflage Cloak or something like that, but actually I'm going to pick Barrison's Head. This was Nick's idea a long time ago, and I honestly have never stopped using Barrison's Head on this character since then, and the reason is because Jester has some really good dodge overall, and then he can boost it by using Solo or something, but having protection just to keep this character a bit safer is really nice. It comes in handy surprisingly quite often because there are a lot of strong attacks that can reach into rank 3, so giving him 25% prod in case his dodge fails is nice to have. Then you have the downside of the bonus stress on a character that can heal his own stress for free pretty much at any time that he wants to. If you've not given Barristan's Jester a try, give it a try. I think you'll like it. Leper's gonna get two trinkets that pretty much do the same thing. So the first one for a class trinket is Fortunate Armlet. This is accuracy and crit, and it has bonus stress, which Leper really doesn't care about because he can shave his own stress down with Solemnity or Reflection in camp. And in return, you get bonus accuracy and crit, which is very nice for this character. Berserk Mask was a close second, just because the upside in terms of stats are freaking nutty and the downsides are pretty manageable, but at the end of the day, Leopard does need accuracy, so I'm giving him fortunate armlets. No surprise here for the neutral trinket, I'm going to suggest Focus Ring as Leopard's best neutral trinket, and that's just for the same reason pretty much, is he doesn't really care about getting hit, he can take a lot of punishment, so the minus dodge doesn't matter to him, and then you get 10 accuracy on top of a bunch of bonus crit, which makes his damage just that much more consistent. Leper has a very high damage range, and having kind of low crit for this character is a bit unfortunate. That's probably something they did to balance the character, so they gave him a lot of good base damage, and then he has low accuracy and then low crit rates. And so the reason we want to stack crit on Leper is because when you get a critical hit in this game with a damage move, it rolls the maximum damage. So if Leopard can do up to 26 damage, like even if it's 13 to 26, if he crits, it's gonna pick 26 every single time. And then you get 50% on top of that. So Leopard baseline, without any other mitigating circumstances like prod or bonus damage, his regular crit at champion with the level five weapon is going to be 39. So if you can consistently guarantee Leopard's top end of damage, or at least get it up to 30% or 25 or whatever it is, that's good enough. That is pretty solid, and you will notice an improvement in Leper if he can crit somewhat consistently. For Man in Arms, it was difficult picking trinkets because he has a couple different playstyles that you can make use of. He has class trinkets that support them, and then there are a lot of neutral trinkets that you can give to him to make him better at whatever you're trying to accomplish. You don't always have to do buff bot or guard spam, you can do crush and retribution for damage, for instance. So for Man in Arms, I decided to give him old unit standard as his best class trinket just because this covers a lot of options and if you want to go repost you know outside of the neutral trinket discussion here then you get repost damage for the set bonus but otherwise you get debuff chance so bellow gets better you get death blow resist which helps out a bit and then you get stun chance for rampart so this covers a lot of playstyles. so i think that's probably his best class trinket just because it's so flexible neutral trinkets as i was saying with the class trinkets were very difficult to pick between i actually ended up with i think like four or five that I felt could have been worthy of being the number one to pick, but I'm going to go 
with fortifying garlic as the neutral trinket of choice and the reason is because that even though man at arms has a few different builds that he can run i think that at the core most of the man at arms builds do run guard so being able to not get hit by bleed and blight consistently by using garlic is nice so for these reasons i pick garlic but honestly a lot of things work on man at arms just because he's so flexible for Cultus, it was a tough call between Vial of Sand and Demon's Cauldron, and I think I'm going to actually go with Vial of Sand, of all things. The Demon's Cauldron has some really nice stuff, like the bonus crits and the higher just skill chances overall, but Vial of Sand gives more flexibility to a cultist. It gives him the option of running his debuff moves and his pull, so you can make use of those, and you still get some really good stun chance. And then you get stun resist on top of it, and there's no downside to this trinket, unlike Demon's Cauldron, which gives you lowered virtue chance and bonus stress. So, with that in mind, I'm going to pick Vile of Sand as his best trinket, but it's very, very close. And what's sad about Occultus's class trinkets is that he either is like forced into one direction or the other, and he has no dedicated healing trinkets. So it's either you're doing damage occultist or like utility occultist, you can't really... I guess you could run both, but usually it's better to just specialize. And I think the upsides of Vial of Sand are just that good that it should be considered his best trinket. For neutral trinkets, there are a lot of good choices for Occultus because he's so flexible, much like Man at Arms and some of the other heroes on this list. Ancestor's Ring is a very strong contender for him because you get accuracy and prod on someone, especially if you put them up front or even in rank 3. Those are both very good things to have. But I think I'm going to go with Feather Crystal as his best neutral trinket, and there are a couple reasons. The first is it gives him some bonus dodge, which is his main defense, so that's nice to have. And then it gives him two speed on top of everything else, even though he gets some penalties to move resist and stun resist. Having speed on someone like a cultist is just good overall, because a cultist is a character much like an Aquarian, where he wants to set up early in the fight so he can dictate what's happening. If you run him up front, he wants to go first so he can get a stun out. If he's facilitating offense with a mark, you want him to go first so he can actually do that. Or if you're going to pull something, you want to be able to do that. And then if someone needs healing, you can drop them a heal quickly early in the next round. So Feather Crystal covers a lot of options for Occultus. So much like Vial of Sand, I think these are both good for the same reason. For Plague Doctor, it is no surprise that we're going to go with Blasphemous Vial as the class trinket of choice. This thing just covers her best playstyle and it covers every option of that playstyle. It gives her accuracy so she can hit a base of backliners. It gives her stun chance so she can stun everything into the earth. And then you get blight chance on top of it, which is very helpful to have. The bonus stress damage received is a downside, but it's actually not as big of a one as you would initially think. And that is because Plague Doctor can be fast enough to reliably stun both backline enemies, which is where stress casters usually are. So if you have a team that is capable of killing backline enemies quickly, and you have Plague Doctor there to stun them on the first turn, the bonus stress from this trinket actually doesn't come into play that often. So even though the number of the downside is pretty high at 25%, it is one that is very, very manageable, so I don't think it's actually that big of a penalty. The neutral trinket pick on Plague Doctor is going to be Feather Crystal for the exact same reason as Occultus. Plague Doctor is someone that likes to set up in the fight and dictate what's happening. So being able to go first and quickly, very consistently, is good for her. It lets you get that opening stun without having to take stress damage or let the enemy supports do their job. And it also lets you go fast enough to use battlefield medicine if someone has a bleed or blight that you need to cure quickly. And then you get the bonus dodge on top of it. And Plague Doctor's base dodge is kind of bad, so having the ability to have a bit more in terms of defense is good. Shield Breaker, I'm going to go with her Spectral Spear Tip, Color of Madness Trinket. This thing is fairly cheap at 65 shards and it has a lot of bonuses that are just good. The random targeting isn't even that big of a deal, it's only 5%, and if you run her late game and open with Impale, then you don't even have to worry about the random targeting chance for the first round. It gives her some bonus HP, which she greatly appreciates, and then Blight Chance, which is something she definitely wants to have. As I said before, it is fairly cheap. Neutral Trinket for Shield Breaker, we are going with the Signet Ring. This is because Shield Breaker does appreciate having a bit more extra accuracy in order to hit those evasive people in the back if you're going to use Puncture or Pierce. It also gives her some prot on top, which is nice because in later game, when she gets more access to things that boost her HP, like spear tip, or her armor, or training ring, or snake skin, right? There are a lot of things that give her bonus HP. So having prot on top of that gives her more effective life, and that is really nice. Unlike the previous two characters, there isn't really much nuance to the decision making for these trinkets. It's really just giving her more effective damage or just a little bit more protection. 
because both those things are things she wants and she's usually up front. Vestal, the heel bot herself, I'm gonna go with her Salacious Diary as her personal trinket because that just gives her bonus healing with no penalty. All the other healing trinkets in the game, besides Chirogens, I believe, give you some kind of penalty, whether it be stress, damage received, or something else. Like Sacred Scroll has a lot of heavy downsides that are usually not worth taking, so I think Salacious is just good. I'm kind of a bit sad of how many Crimson Court Trinkets I included in this list, but really just the trinkets are so strong from that DLC that it's really hard to argue that they're just that good. Neutral Trinket for Vessel. I am picking the Ancestor's Map. This could be Survival Guide if you're lower level. But Ancestor's Map is pretty good on her to carry around because she only needs one trinket really to perform her job. Later you can even swap out the Healing Trinket, but having the map is great. The map is a bunch of bonus scouting and bonus trap disarm. It's also neutral, so you can pass it around on the team if other people need to disarm traps to heal stress. Alright, y'all, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you're thinking down below in the comments. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. I know a lot of these trinkets were DLC and all that, but just look at the stats that were included on them and try and find those in some of the neutral options. There's so many to cover that I don't think I can do it while keeping the video as short as I want to. But if you have other ideas for good trinkets, let us know down below. Tell us about it. Join Discord, tell us about it in real time if you really want to as well. And then check out the box below for all the cool stuff like Discord, Twitch, Patreon, and Twitter. The next big project coming up is the Crimson Court Guide that I'm still working on. I'm trying very hard to get it done. Hopefully I'll have it up by Sunday. Otherwise, that's it for this one. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.